His name is Ted Scott. He is our current champion. He's about to play against his 15th opponent. If he beats this player, he will win a third new car, which will bring his total winnings to over $72,000. Will he succeed in winning this next game? We'll find out in a moment as, from Hollywood, it's everybody's game of strategy, knowledge, and fun. It's Tic Tac Toe. And now, here's our host, Jim Goldwell. Oh, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Oh, thank you very much. Well, here we are. Our current champion is a terrific player. As you just heard, he's going to be going for his third car in just a minute. He's really up there in the Tic Tac Doe Hall of Fame in prizes and cash. Let's meet him right now. Our current champion is an attorney whose interests include refereeing basketball games. His winnings total in cash and prizes, $66,450. Meet Ted Scott. It's a lot of money. It really is. A third car. You're, you're going for it here in just a minute. What are your thoughts right now? I'm pretty excited about it. I, I think the person who's most excited, though, is uh, my grandmother, Catherine Hawes in Mesa. She wa Mesa, Arizona. She watches every show, and uh, I talked to her last night, and she was very excited. Are you going to give her a car? We'll see. I can't, <laughs> I can't say that now. <laughs> okay, well, we wish you the best of luck. Let's get to the bonus game. We didn't have a chance to play it last at the end of the last show. Behind the numbers, various amounts of money, the tick, the tack, and good old dragon. You want to get the tick and the tack or $1,000 or more, and this is what you'll get this time. Charlie? Well, Ted, no matter what the season, you'll be equipped for sports with these gifts. First, Ted, you'll be dressed for action in this fall sportswear ensemble. The clean, classic styling of the Tigre sportswear for men gives you the winning edge for total good looks in every season. Classic, comfortable, terrific, the Tigre. Then, when winter rolls around, You'll be ready for snow trips with this great ski luggage. A selection of rugged and tough lightweight sports luggage from Outdoor Products featuring the double ski bag and boot bag of Cordura Nylon by DuPont, furnished by Outdoor Products. Next, on the first day of spring, you'll hit the links with these fine golf clubs. From Pin Seeker, a set of custom-made golf clubs including stainless steel woods with matching radio uh, sole irons and a deluxe staff bag from Pin Seeker. And finally, Ted, for unforgettable summer fun, there's nothing like swimming and surfing in the Pacific Ocean on your vacation in heavenly Hawaii! Land of sugarcane, coconuts, exotic flowers, and breathtaking sunsets. You'll enjoy tropical sun, golden beaches, and fabulous entertainment when you answer this call to the islands. We'll fly you via Western Airlines wide-body jet from Los Angeles to Honolulu. You can count on Western for warm hospitality and friendly service in flight, furnished by Western Airlines. While there, you'll stay at the Kona Surf on the big island of Hawaii, set in beautiful tropical gardens, luxury accommodations, all the warmth and spirit of Polynesia from the Kona Surf on Hawaii's Kona Coast. This seasonal sports package is worth in cash and prizes over $3,750. Looks like you'll be able to put that sports luggage to use on your way to Hawaii. Huh? Boy, I sure hope so. Just don't hit the dragon. Well, you've you've had some to. good luck. Your total is so high in cash and prizes because you've done well against the dragon. I have had some luck. So wish you luck this time as well. So <laughs> avoid the dragon. Get the tick and the tack. You'll get the dough automatically. He's hidden. He's behind there somewhere. Going to have some help from Joni and Madeline and Chris and your friends out there? Yes, and also Patty. I so forgot why, Patty. Why don't we let Patty go first? Number nine. She likes number nine. Let's see what there. Tack. Nice start. Joni says number four. We'll okay. Four. Joni is signaling number four. 250. All right. So far, so now good. Now we'll go with Chris's six. Number six. All right, middle right, 500. Nice shot. All right, Madeline, bring us home with the number three. Number three. All right, number three. Top right-hand corner, 150. Oh, you're so close. 900. What do we need? It can all happen on this one. Lucky number seven. All right, you've had luck there before. Behind number seven. Let's find out where that dragon was. Where was he? Oh, dead center. You've yeah. taken that center box before. Yes, Lucky I you am. didn't do it this time. Well, you're off to Hawaii. The sports luggage you will, in fact, be packing. Without a doubt. Gosh, let's take a look now. Well, let's uh, reassess here. <laughs> you're up to now 
total, cash and prizes, $70,500. If you beat your next opponent, you'll have a brand new car. Head on back there. All right, before we find out who his opponent's going to be, we're going to take a break and be right back. Don't go away. You beat this next opponent, Ted, you'll pick up a third car. Let's find out who it is right now. Charlie? From Tempe, Arizona, he's a fitness consultant who writes poetry and competes in triathlons. Meet Chris Kahn! Welcome, Chris. Hi, Jim. Tell us what it's like to compete in a triathlon. Well, it's a competition that involves a 2.2-mile swim, a 112-mile bike, and then a 26-mile run, all one right after the other. A lot of numbers, very compact period of time, right? Yeah, exactly, one race. Why do you do it? Well, I like the challenge of putting my mind up against my body, see if I, if I can overcome it. Kind of overrule what your muscles tell you? Exactly. Uh, how did you get into competing? Well, I work as a fitness counselor, and I figure if I'm keeping uh, people in shape, I better keep in shape myself, right? And I guess that's exactly right. You go a long way to stay fit. Some people uh, exercise to keep fit. Uh, they just do it, uh, sometimes people just do it to uh, make their pants fit, right? I guess so. <laughs> Most of the people I counsel do. <laughs> Good for you. Well, we wish you the best of luck in this game against a solid champion. Let's take a look at the nine categories you're both going to work with this time. They are children's literature, number please, ancient history, games, about words, auction, Foreign words, showdown, and strange names. Remember, those red boxes are special categories. Beware, and I'll explain them as we get to them. All right, Ted, you're the champ. Go ahead and start us off. I'd like to try strange names in the lower right-hand corner, please. All right, we'll let you do that, Ted. Here's the question. This English actor named James starred in the hit 1982 film, The Verdict. His last name sounds like someone who you'd find working in construction. Name him. Mason. Right. James Mason is right. Bottom right-hand corner gets an X. Let's go ahead and shuffle him up with 200 in the pot. All right, Chris. Well, Jim, I'm going to take games in the center. Going for the center box right off the bat. It's a two-parter. You'll have some extra time, Chris. I'll name two popular sports. You tell me how many players each team is allowed to have in action at one time in that sport. Number one, how many players are on the ice for a hockey team at the beginning of the game? Number two, how many players may a basketball team have on the court? Here's your extra time. Center box question, worth $300. Talking about two popular sports, Chris, you tell me how many players each team is allowed to have an action at one time in that sport. Number one, how many players are on the ice for a hockey team at the beginning of the game? Well, I'm going to have to guess at that one because hockey's not my sport. I'll say seven. One off. Six. And the basketball team five, has that's... only five. You knew that one. All right. Can't give you the center box. Let's go ahead and shuffle 200 in the pot. Ted? I would like to try ancient history in the lower left-hand corner, please, Jim. Okay, Ted. European civilization developed on the shores of the Aegean Sea almost 3,000 years <laughs> Christ. That civilization began when men first learned how to make this metal alloy, which is a combination of copper and tin. Name that metal. Bronze. Right. <laughs> Looked like you might have been reaching, Ted, were you? That was tough. <laughs> I saw a B forming on your lips. Okay, let's put an X in the bottom left-hand corner. 400 in the pot. Let's shuffle them. Chris, back to you. Well, Jim, I'm just going to have to take strange names for the block. See if you can block Ted this time, Chris. A singer named Patty, whose hits include Tennessee Waltz, has a name like something you might find in a book for a block. What's her last name? Page. Patty Page is right. You have a block. So we're $600 in the pot. Gentlemen, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Attention. Ted, your turn. I will try about words in the upper right-hand corner, please. All right, Ted. This word is well known to actors and performing musicians. It means to practice something over and over again before performing in public. And it comes from the Latin for to plow again. What is that word? Rehearse. Right. That's exactly right. 
which I'm sure you did a little of in rehearsing to play tic-tac-toe. <laughs> let's put an X in the top right-hand corner now. 800 in the pot, let's shuffle them. Chris, your turn. Well, Jim, I think I'm gonna take uh, child's lid in the center for the block. All right. Two-part question, you'll have some extra time, Chris. I'll describe two characters from children's stories which originated in the Middle East. You name them. Number one, name the young boy from the Arabian Nights stories who found a magic lamp which contained a magic genie. And two, name the boy who used the words open sesame to gain access to a cave filled with treasure. Here's some extra time to think it over, Chris. <laughs> Chris, I'll describe two characters from children's stories which originated in the Middle East. You name them. Number one, name the young boy from the Arabian Nights stories who found a magic lamp which contained a magic genie. It would be Aladdin, Jim. Right. Second part, for the block, name the boy who used the words open sesame to gain access to a cave filled with treasure. I can only think of the same story. I'll say Aladdin again. No, Alibaba. Oh. Box goes unclaimed. 800 in the pot. Let's shuffle them. Ted. I will try children's literature for the win, please, Jim. All right, Ted. You're going for another game here. This would make number 15. Answer this question successfully, Ted. You win a third car. Listen carefully. In the popular story by Beatrix Potter, a naughty little rabbit named Peter disobeyed his mother and sneaked into a vegetable garden owned by this farmer. The farmer almost caught him, but Peter got away. For the game, a brand new car, your third one, totaling cash and prizes $77,200. Name the farmer. Farmer Brown? No. Farmer McGregor. Oh, Chris, you're saved. <laughs> okay, 800 in the pot. Let's shuffle them. Wow. Chris. I'm going to take that center box about words for the block again, Jim. All right, Chris. You'll have some extra time to think this over. I'll describe two common flowers. You name them. Number one, this yellow and white flower is often considered a weed. Its name comes from the Latin words for lion's tooth. Number two, because some species of this yellow and white flower open in the morning and close at night, they were named for the old English word for the eye of the day. Here's your extra time. Chris, I'll describe two common flowers. You name them. Number one, this yellow and white flower is often considered a weed. Its name comes from the Latin words for lion's tooth. Dandelion. Right. Number two, because some species of this yellow and white flower open in the morning and close at night, they were named for the old English word for the eye of the day, for a block. Name it. Iris. Best guess. No. Daisy. Ooh. The box goes unclaimed. $800 in the pot. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Time to shuffle them one more time. And Ted, it's back to you. I will try ancient history in the center, please, Jim. All right, Ted. Going for the game again. I don't have to reiterate. If you can get this question, earn the box. You'll pick up on your third car. Now, this is a two-parter, and you'll have some extra time, Ted. I'll describe two of the world's seven ancient wonders. You tell me where they are located, or where they were located. Number one, a huge bronze statue called the Colossus stood near the harbor of this Greek island on the Aegean Sea. Number two, an ancient king built the famous hanging gardens for his wife in this city. Here's your extra time, Ted. Center box question. In this situation, it's worth a game and a, and a third car for you, Ted. I'm describing two of the world's seven ancient wonders. You tell me where they were located. Number one, 
A huge bronze statue called the Colossus stood near the harbor of this Greek island on the Aegean Sea. Rhodes. Right. Part two. For the game. A brand new car and $77,300. An ancient king built the famous hanging gardens for his wife in this city. Name it. Vesuvius? Babylon. Oh, Chris saved again. <laughs> $800 in the pot. Let's shuffle them again. And get back to you for a selection, Chris. I'm going to go with the games in the center box, Jim, and I'm going to get it this time. That center box is getting a lot of play. You need it for a block. You'll have some extra time. I'll describe two pieces used in the game of chess, Chris. You name them. Number one, this usually insignificant piece, when moved into the last row on the board, may be exchanged for any piece except for a king. Number two, this piece can move only in an L-shaped pattern and is the only piece that can jump over other men. Here's your extra time. All right, Chris, going for a block. I'm describing two pieces used in the game of chess. You must name them. Number one, this usually insignificant piece, when moved into the last row on the board, may be exchanged for any piece except for a king. That would be a pawn, Jim. Right. Number two, for a block, this piece can move only in an L-shaped pattern and is the only piece that can jump over other men. Name it. A knight. You have the block! <laughs> like you said, Chris, you're gonna get this one. You did it. Put an O in the center box for a block. $1,100 in the pot. Four boxes remain. Let's shuffle them. Ted. Mm. I'll go for uh, showdown, please, Jim. Special category, boxes up for grabs. You will win your 15th game of tic-tac-toe. If you can get this box, Ted. Chris, you need this for a block. Now, in the showdown qu category, I'll ask questions with two-part answers. The first of you to buzz in with a correct answer wins the box, unless your opponent can come up with the other half. We'll keep playing till one of you fails to come up with an answer. Hands on the buzzers. Name the two states which border on Washington. Ted. Excuse me, Jim, that's Washington, D.C., please. Washington, D.C. Then name the two states which border on Washington, D.C. Maryland. That's one. Chris? Virginia. That's another. Next question. In American movies, three actresses have played the role of Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. Ted? Chris? Give me one answer, you'll have the block. Can you repeat the question? Yes, in American movies, three actresses have played the role of Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. Name Judy one. Garland. Right, you have a block. <laughs> Judy Garland, Diana Ross, and Feruza Balk played Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. So, you have a block, Chris, congratulations. Well played. We're going to take a break and be right back. You'll laugh your blank off. This round, critical moment in the game right now. You guys have been playing terrifically. You missed that center box three times. Uh, then you finally got it. Yes. Right? First half, the question, every time. What do you think of this guy? He's, uh, you know? He's pretty tough. He's uh, definitely in the driver's seat right now. You, you saying that? You're going to give him that, huh? Oh, I'm not going to concede it quite yet, but uh, yeah. I think he's got an advantage. Well, you both have really been playing very well. Uh, you know, of course, that uh, if you can beat this guy, and that's, that's up for grabs right now, you're going to pick up a third car. Good luck, Chris, Thanks, next time around. Ted, let's check what you're leaving with. You'll come back next time. $70,500. Let's do that. I'm Jim Caldwell. Hope to see you again in the next show. Ask a simple question. Any member of the ape family. Uh, the gorilla. Again. Uh, Panda beer. Get a stupid answer. <laughs> All over the country, people are saying, where do they get these things? <laughs> the best of Family Feud, weeknights at 8.30 and 12.30 Eastern. Miss Johnson, Miss Johnson. Aria, we think there are some things you just shouldn't have. I didn't hear. Could you do that again? Oh! 
see what all the blank and noise is about. Match game today at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, only on Game Show Network. Tic-Tac-Doe is a Jack Barry and Tannenreif production.